Most companies, when they look at us, they look at, shall we grow with more and more salespeople or more and more marketing? Our experience is that if you have a high complexity in your deal making, spiced up with a, a finite market, a new category, and subsequently a rainmaker dependency, you benefit from scaling, not duplicating salespeople. So instead of trying to duplicate your rainmakers, you need to scale your rainmakers. And you do it in three ways. You add more content around your rainmakers, you scale them through media, and our media machinery is there for that. You also scale the rainmakers with supporting staff. If you have decided to scale your rainmakers with marketing, there are a few different marketing approaches to evaluate. A very common one, which is not super successful if you have high complexity and a finite market, is to do anything cold, like cold calls, cold emails, cold in-mails. They typically create a very wide funnel, but a very low conversion rate, but also a pretty high burning bridges rate. So if you want to build a position in a segment and in your category, be careful with those pretty aggressive cold techniques. The second marketing option that people spend a lot of money on trying to achieve similar things, scaling these key people, is events, conferences and events. Those are, I'm not saying you shouldn't do that, you should, but my experience is that you should be more selective. You should try to be a keynote speaker as opposed to having a booth. And I can, if you call me, I can give you some techniques for that. So keynote speeches are way more credible than having a roll up and some candies in a booth. Also these conferences, unless they are really, really selected, tend to have a lot of medium decision makers. You, you rarely find the highest stakeholders there. I mean, again, they're good in the mix, but companies tend to overinvest in events. The third option is to do targeted marketing online, but rely only on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is beautiful in the way that almost all people in the business world have a profile on LinkedIn. Secondly, you can do pretty advanced targeting, type of companies, countries, roles, etc. So the targeting is pretty, pretty sophisticated. However, the weakness with LinkedIn as a standalone tool is that a lot of our clients' main stakeholders are not hanging out on LinkedIn frequently enough. So you get a very marginal effect spending money on LinkedIn alone. So marketing and salespeople are hanging out frequently on LinkedIn. So probably us, you watching this and myself and others, but head of operations, production leaders. So a lot of our clients are having more like industrial like cases and their main stakeholders are not hanging out on LinkedIn. So we've seen quite a few companies realize that LinkedIn as a standalone option is not giving the best returns. It gives a marginal effect. Our option is to use five different media worlds. So the deal orchestration enablement is to use five different media worlds LinkedIn, obviously, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and news sites all around the world, but with hyper-targeting. So using a wide media portfolio, but with extreme targeting. Those two contrasts are very, very powerful for companies having high complexity, a finite market, coming with a new category, and need to win the land and expand deals with only a few rainmakers on the selling side. Also, we have combined the marketing piece, this highly advanced media piece, with very advanced statistics and the support for social selling and selling. Those three combined and all the stakeholders is very, very powerful. The third layer of decisions that our clients are making is, okay, we buy into the Megadis way of doing this with five media platforms, a very advanced targeting model and very advanced statistics around it, combining it with sales and social selling and the stakeholder mapping. We buy into that, but we think we can do this in-house. Before building Megadis, I've been deploying this in a company without the tools we have. It took six different platforms. I had to have four full-time employees and a pretty significant budget. And it took six months to get it up and running, even though I'm an expert in this field. It's easy to look at what we do and completely underestimate how complicated it is. I think without our software layer and our trained staff, it's very expensive and very tricky to get it to work. We do this every, every day. And even for us, it has been a journey. Even if, let's say you consider doing it in-house, let us do it first, use us as a blueprint, 
and then you can evaluate doing it in-house. I think you will, when you have worked with us for a while, realize this is very sophisticated. We should not go down the path of having software developers building stuff on top of these platforms, having this kind of report being conducted internally. It doesn't make sense. It's not our core business. Let them do that.